Governor Yesum Wike of River State has punctured speculations that he and his allies in the People's Democratic Party's G5 forum met with presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Bola Tinubu, in London and struck a deal to support Tinubu against PDP's Atiku in the 2023 elections. Now, on the same day, at a rally in Abo, PDP's vice presidential candidate, um, Delta State Governor Ifanyo Koa, declared that his party would still win in the 2023 presidential election. Notwithstanding the schemings of the G5 governors led by Governor Wiki. Also, the Benue State Governor Samuel Otom has thrown his weight behind the Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi in the forthcoming elections. Now, this comes barely 48 hours after President, former, former President Lucia Gorbasan, I beg your pardon, had released a six page letter endorsing the former Anambra State Governor. Autumn is one of the five aggrieved governors of the People's Democratic Party known as the G5 or the Integrity uh, Group. Others are Yesem Wike of Rivers, Shei Makinde of Oyo, Ifan Yugwai of Enugu and Okeze Ikbazu of Abia. Well, joining us to break this down is uh, Benga Olompomi. He is a public relations consultant and an APC member. Also joining us is Ilemona Onoja. He's the head new media department of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for having us. Great. Good evening. I'm going to start with you, Lemona, because your party seems to be the one on the chopping board today. Um, the G5 governors, seem, some people would see them as a, torn, uh, a thorn in the flesh of the PDP and your presidential candidate. Some others would, be, would see them as those who are fighting for the rights of the Southern um, Caucus in the People's Democratic Party. But then um, when the story broke that these men were going to be meeting with... Um, the APC candidate, um, it did not necessarily sit well with the PDP. We've also seen um, people asking that these five governors be disciplined within the party. What's the PDP's position on this whole uh, imbroglio? Our position is um, very clear. More than um, there, there are quite a number of people, and, and justifiably so, who are unhappy with the, um, with the fraternization between the G5 governors and the not just the APC candidate but also the Labour Party candidate, and the and the justification for this this content or this unhappiness with their fraternisation is very simple. We've got an election to win, right? And we'd rather be going to the election with a united house focused solely on the um, task of taking our message to Nigerian people. I'm telling them why after seven and a half years of maladministration and misadministration, which all the G5 governors are agreed on, we just rather focus. So we see this as what it is. It's a distraction. It's a distraction that we are compelled or where we now have to, well, we're compelled to deal with. We'd rather not be dealing with this. It's already a considerable fight against an undemocratic, the undemocratic disposition of the APC in the first place. We have to deal with it anyways. Now, it, it, it comes down to that very simple thing. Okay, we can walk and talk at the same time. We've held the door open for these governors for as long as possible while we are chasing a reconciliation internally, at the same time speaking to the Nigerian people and telling them our plans, policies, and projections for the future. But I think it's come to that point where, you know, people have to, you know, make up their mind one way or the other. I don't think that there is any worse damage that these G5 governors can do to the party. There's already a, they've been in the media for several months. They've been in public for several months. They've held all sorts of comments and made all sorts of statements for several months. I think that the worst that they can possibly do to the party from their position is behind us. I think that we've taken our message to Nigerian people and it's been very well received across the country. I think that, you know, more than anything, they should be more worried about, you know, what they do with themselves after their 10 years elapsed mm. than what the outcome of this election should be. We're still here. We're still confident that one way or the other, with them, if they finally decide to come on board, or without them, if they decide that they want to face whatever um, decisions that is within their constitutional rights to face, then whatever it is, we think, we believe, that the message of our presidential candidates has been very well received across the country. 
and that we are in the place where we are confident that this election has been won, will be won, by the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Alaja Tsukwabaka. Benga, let, let, let's talk about your presidential uh, candidate. Now, we've seen, just like Ilemona has said, a, a little bit of hobnobbing of the G5 governors and your presidential candidate. And that also has been seen with, of course, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. But then many have queried the a belated response by Bolamet Tinubu rejecting um, the fact that these governors were billed to meet with him outside of the country. Many are saying that this is also some uh, tactic that um, uh, he's, you know, employed to try to hide the fact that this meeting actually held, even though uh, the governors have also said that, you know, the meeting did not hold. But um, would your presidential candidate be open if you, you know, you were an insider and privy to this information? Would be open to um, have any form of meeting with these G5 governors, knowing that they're members of the People's Democratic Party, and would obviously uh, be making sure that their party wins and holds sway in the states that they govern. So, um, he, he, I'm happy to be talking about this very uh, and it's funny that uh, the man who alleges to be the unifier as the candidate of the he, he, he did, is one that is having to deal with a party where most a very good chunk of governors of his party are not in support. They are clearly showing that they don't want. So if the man who says that he is unifier and he is coming on the platform of saying he wants to unify the country, can't even unify the members of his own party. Then it means that his message is dead on arrival. And that is where I want to see. And it, the onus is on him as the person who is the candidate of his own party, who is a foundation member, who is a foundation member of he, he can't get governors of his own act tonight behind him. Then there's a problem there. And Nigerians should know that as a red That's to start. Now the onus, yes, um the candidate of my party wants to win and wants to win the presidential election where he needs as many votes from across the country as possible. So if it and he's entitled by all rights, and we have this statement on that, that he's entitled to reach out to as many and meet as many people as he feels he needs to win the election. So if the GIFA or whatever name they call it are available for conversations, of course he will uh with I'm not saying that he met with because he had a statement has been issued that he has not made this into in law. But the fact is, they are um, citizens of, of Nigeria, they are party leaders in their own right, in whatever uh, states where they and they are stakeholders. If the governor, if my candidate thinks that it's important for him to help, them, he will reach out. And he, or again, but what I want Nigeria to take away from this question tonight, man who says that he's a unifier cannot unify his party. That is a red flag. Okay. I just I just want to take you up on some things that you've mentioned. You're talking about the fact that he's unable, Atiku Abubakar is unable to unify his party. Um, but of course, if I recall, the, the APC also has had its fair share of drama. Recently, the former Speaker of the House of Representatives um, has just moved to the PDP because um, they were, he and of course Baba Chair Lawal and some other people who seem to be Christians in the North, um, stood against the Muslim Muslim ticket. That somewhat also is a, a chunk of the party that has broken away. So can you be pointing fingers without the others pointing back at you? I'm just curious. And secondly, um, talking about the fact that, um, you know, your, your, your presidential candidate, if he were open to this, he, he has every right to go around and try to get as many people to, you know, believe in his ticket. But Let's take, for example, River State. River State does have an APC that's also somewhat imploding um, and that seems abandoned. Uh, how does it look if he's hobnobbing with a wiki um, and there is an APC that needs a presidential candidate's um, you know, backing of sorts? So you are trying to mix apples and oranges, and I understand that you have to say your role. But you can't compare five sitting governors to a former speaker. Five sitting governors former to SPF. a former speaker of the House of Rep. Five sitting governors, you want to compare them to a former um, chief of staff 
but no, the SDF who is currently uh, facing you know legal issues in court. What are the issues that the, uh, these two men you mentioned have against Olamid? They supported him wholeheartedly when they thought that they would be beneficiaries and come out as vice presidential candidates to him. They thought that it was their opportunity to talk, but the man looked beyond um, you know, religious inclinations and decided to go with the best, most prepared uh, running mate that he could find. And that is their only grouse. The only reason they are supporting other candidates today is because he doesn't personally benefit them. So, the fact that um, my candidate might be interested in working with me, it's down to the fact that election is a game of not. If, and for you to put into the, uh, add to the, you know, the whole mix that there is an implosion in River State, I think you should reject your, 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 your facts. River State APC is in very good hands. River State APC is well catered for. They, 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 our candidate there is running a very, very good race. So, uh, again, to pull us back to where the issues are, the implosion that the only implosion that I see today is the one going on in Eden, where there are five governors, and this is a party that has far less governors than the APC to start government when the APC was going to take over from the we had defections from the PDP to the APC. That is how we, that is one of the major ways that we took over. Many governorship candidates, senators, House of Rep members left the PDP and joined the APC. Have you seen that happen? Have you seen it happen at the scale it happened then? No. Why? In our party we had a candidate that is experienced that has been in Came for so long that understands what it means to unify, truly unify. So we have no issues in, in the APC. What, where the issues are, where the drama is, and they should deal with it as uh, the election moves. Um, before I go to Lebanon, because I know that there's a lot in Lebanon wants to speak. Yeah, I know you want to respond, but quickly, but quickly, Benga. So if you say that your the APC in River State is doing a great job and you know they're not dead they're not imploding okay fine and well can we say that your candidate because you said he's open to speaking with anybody um, but if the apc is so certain that they're on ground why do they need pdp governors and and it's do you can i say that there's a sense of desperation because most of the south east and south south governors may not necessarily be voting or looking in the direction of the apc quickly if you can answer that for me Okay, so we are very, very, we are very, very comfortable with the news. I, I will, I'm, a, I'm a politician, so I will never use the words and say, oh, we don't need a certain set of people. What we are doing, trying to do is to show up our number. If taking away from the the uh, numbers of the PDP is what will assist my candidate to win election, you can't ask him not to do that. Um, the Democrats and Republicans in America always go after people within the opposition party or the party, uh, the other party, such that so we can take from those that are undecided within that other party. So it's a normal thing. Well, and when you talk about desperation, I don't think you will find a candidate, somebody more in charge, more confident than the APC candidate. And as I said, again, I like the fact that you are trying to pull, uh, push things in that direction, but the only party that has a problem today in Nigeria is ED because okay. first of all, five of their members and five of their governors are working against their own candidate. One of the running mate to this same Abraka article is the front runner is, sorry, is the, uh, the ticket holder in the Labour Party. His running mate is another former PDP member and today, as you said, one of the people just endorsed him. So, why is the why should the APC have anything to worry about? Okay. They say they are the ones that want to unify Nigeria. Let them start by unifying. Okay, let me come to you, Lemona. I know that you have a lot to respond to. But recently, Governor Wiki had been quoted to say. First yes. First things first. Okay, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. The, the Benga in his commentary 
reveals the rather undemocratic disposition that the APC has towards politics. That somebody is a unifier does not mean that there will be absence of disagreement. It doesn't. If you're expecting that in a political party that has as broad a base as the People's Democratic Party, that there will be no disagreement of any sort. Of a beach in in, in Bono that I want to sell to you. It, it, it's simply unrealistic. The disposition that, oh, people saying, oh, I don't agree with you, or I, I want to do things a, a different way, means that you, you don't have the capacity to pursue dialogue, means that you don't have the ability to find um, common ground, means that you are not willing to continually pursue negotiation so that you can carry as many people along as possible, and then it should, you should worry. If anybody comes onto national television and says, and because people say no, people in your party that are saying no, and anybody who comes and says to you that the people in APC are not, um, there are no people who have sufficient enough discontent, we're seeing defections on a daily basis in Katsina, in Kebi, in Zamfara, in Sokoto, in Bono, in, I mean, come on, they're all over the place. More. Let's also talk about the river state. You say the thing about your yeah, numbers. No. What Bola Tinubu showed when he's so confidently or so brazenly chasing after the G5 governors is a lack of confidence in the APC structure to deliver an election for you. That's what he's doing. He's saying to Rotimi Amici, I don't believe you can win river state for me or give me good enough numbers. That's why I want to hear some wicked. He's saying to the people in the Whoever their candidates are in in Enugu, in Benue, in you know all over the place in these five states in Oyo, I don't trust you guys, and I believe that there is a better structure, there is a more acceptable structure, there is a more likable face in the PDP. That's why I'm chasing those faces. It's really simple. Anybody is listen. I understand chasing as many folks as possible. I understand that. But I am also, I'm not, while I'm not a necessarily a politician, I'm also a little bit aware about these things and how they work. Negotiations of this nature require you to take one risk. First risk is that you unsettle your party structure. There's a reason why Rotimi Amechi is not popular, is not seen on any of the campaigns. Because in River State, he's being told on a daily basis, this on weekend means more to us than you do. Right? There's a reason why he's not joining the campaign trail. But I also know, so one, there's that risk of running your, you know, upsetting your party structure, on the one hand. On the other hand, there's also the thing that this, 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 this support doesn't come for free. The negotiations is give and take, you give something. That's the reason why they had that first meeting several months ago in London. You give something, it's the reason why there are ongoing conversations. There are negotiations that are going on where the APC candidate is saying, I will give you this, that, and the other. If the man knew, if he was confident that his party, his message, his candidature was acceptable, politicians are by nature the selfish people. Mm. There's nobody. There's nobody. There's nobody who will go and negotiate to give away advantage, who will run the risk of upsetting his party structure if he did not know that he okay. was likely to lose this election. All right, Ilamuna. That's the first thing. Speedily get that out of the way. Quickly, let, let me come back to your party now. Um, still talking about the p problems that are brewing within the party. Wiki has recently been quoted to say um, to the PDP, sack me if you can. He's daring, of course, the party to sack him uh, if they think that he's involved in anti-party activities, etc., etc. Again, still talking about the crisis, we hear um, that um, the party chairman, of course, Yocha Ayu, um, is fighting back and he's blocking the G5 governor's nominees for polling duties because many would say that, um, um, well, he's not necessarily going to give or allow these party agents to be accredited by INEC for, you know, at co polling stations and coalition centers. Um, does this not further dent 
the already um, somewhat um, relationship that they already have, the shaky relationship that the, the, the G5 governors and, of course, their followers and the, the party chairman uh, has. If the people who are saying that they're not going to support you and that they are simply going to use um, the, you know, they try to get the party structure to work against you and they're openly cavorting with your, with your opponents. But I, I don't know, I, I don't know that it's an act of aggression to seek to ensure that the party structure remains with its integrity and that it focuses on its core objective, which is the delivery or to, which is ensuring, you know, that it delivers as much success as possible on election day. I don't know that that's an aggression, act of aggression. It's not a sword, it's a shield, if you will. Again, the party has always insisted, as recently as this week, that the door to reconciliation is open. There are several party leaders all over the place who are pursuing um, reconciliation talks as much as possible. And, you know, there is as much effort being put into that as, po as could possibly be done. I would quickly like to double back to something that Benga said about um, um, selfish ambitions and personal ambitions. Everybody knows that if the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party had picked one of these G5 governors as his right, running mate, that we wouldn't have been having this. It's the same thing, the same thing that um, Benga very easily tries to wish away in the APC. It's pretty much what is playing out in the PD. Is that people who have, for their own, I mean, we all, everybody knows who the G5 governor was potentially, who could have been running mate was. And he didn't get that. And he's throwing a tantrum. And it has been a continuous tantrum since then. Everybody knows who this is. So it's it's making this about the candidature of Atikwa Baka, making this about the character of Atikwa Baka, okay. making this about the competence and the capacity of the presidential candidate rather than what it is, somebody who is unhappy that he wasn't picked to be running mate and who has since then gone on this path, that, that, that's what it is. It's not, it's not a reflection on the presidential candidate. Okay. It isn't. The party will face what it will face. And, and I'd like to come here, and this is where I'd like to end. Quickly, because we're out of time. I need Benga to respond, please. Let's just let Benga respond because and we're so, out of time. If I may, if I may, you are trying to say that it's not a reflection. I will end here. You are saying it's not a reflection on the candidate. Let us agree with you. Maybe it is a reflection. It is a reflection on the party. But may I have you? Let me let Benga. 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 Let me so, yeah, but this is how this report I want it. This is how he has, he has tried to push it away from the fact that, oh, it's not an impression on candidate. Okay, it's not an impression of candidate, but maybe it's a reflection on your party that took, that, that conducted a very, very unfair primary. Because that is what the man is saying. That's what we can say that he was unjustly um, treated in that primary. And it's quite for everybody to see where you have a party chairman who is going around and congratulating. Um, the person who steps down and says, Oh, he's what has saved the party. That is why we ask. You have a party that has been unjust with you, right? and the members are revolting. It's not the same thing in the APC. Everybody accepted the result of APC primaries on the day of. On the day of, and everybody is fine. Everybody is fine. And let me see. Lastly, I want to say this. No, God, no president has ever won the presidency in this country without these three states. We Tano, Lagos, and we have to go, Bring guys. I'm so sorry. We have to go. Have to not have any of these three things. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, time is not on our side. I want to say thank you. Benga Lorukwami is a public relations uh, consultant and an APC member. And Ilemona Onoja is the head new media department, People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council. We will have this conversation again, gentlemen, and we'll have more time so that we can draw draw. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. All right. And thank you all for joining us on Plus Politics tonight. Tomorrow is another day, but don't forget, go get your PVCs because that is your passport to a new Nigeria. I'm Mary Anacone. See you tomorrow.